I just got back from adventure filmmaking sailing course. I guess I just feel for you. This is a thing that's very important to me. And I also very feel very vulnerable talking about it. What it is is I'm nervous I'm going to say the wrong thing. I didn't come out and it was a lot harder than I expected. Embracing the water and I look forward to hopping in and maybe hop going into the forest. And of course, learning a lot about filmmaking and storytelling. To me, it's so interesting. I always carry my Cutco knife when I go sailing. <laughs> it's an analogy. Being simultaneously so excited and scared about the unknown. We had some really, really interesting discussions. The thing we didn't really discuss was gender and sexuality. Probably could have if I'd been brave enough to bring it up. Hi, my name is Flossie. I'm a queer non-binary filmmaker. My pronouns are they, them. I'm photographing queer people to tell their stories through a queer tarot deck. And I'm excited to learn more about filmmaking so I can make a documentary about this journey. Now I'm just gonna get all of this on my body. I was super nervous coming towards this trip. I really felt like I was going to be the odd one out. The only AFAB assigned female at birth queer person amongst a large group of dudes. How do I make myself feel comfortable so that I'm going to be able to take in the most from this workshop and get the most out of it? So beautiful. We deal with some weird stuff. <laughs> There we go, we've made it. This is gonna be home for the next three days, four days? Four, four, uh, Long four. enough. I'm excited, nervous, all of those things. Number one, introduction rounds. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll shift. Woo! I'm so thrilled that we have a, a moment like this where it's this warm, it just makes me so happy. To make use of every single second of it, because yes. it's all gonna go. Yeah. Would you make a trip recap and like half the videos on the first day? <laughs> if it was gonna be all fine, I don't know whether I would have brought my wetsuit. Yeah. As soon as I saw it was like so much rain, I was like, I you want to swim. It creates an opportunity and space for participants to speak about who they are, share stories, and for pronouns to be asked for without any fanfare. When we start off with introductions, we set the culture and tone for how a group will work together for the period of time that we spend together. We are sailing adventure day one. We're heading to Jervis, Jervis Inlet on our way to Princess Louisa. Here, Pender Harbor. We're currently going up this channel and we're going all the way up here today. I'm so stoked to start off this trip with beautiful weather because it's probably going to rain for the next four days. I brought my wetsuit so that if I get cabin fever I just jump in the ocean and I am so excited. Your uh, digging sim uh, right here. You don't want to swim with a with the killer whale? Absolutely not. It's been a bit nerve-wracking coming here and meeting everybody for the first time, being definitely out of my comfort zone and the environment and people I'm surrounded by, but it's so cool. Yes. Oh my god. Oh yeah, the tail. So that
that's a dive. It's going under now. That's a little dive when we were at it uh, this morning. I wouldn't mind uh, just, yeah, I wouldn't mind just. Uh, I don't blame you. Sometimes it's hard to justify constantly buying the new versions of things. <laughs> I really didn't want to come on this trip and spend half of my time correcting guys on the pronoun pronouns that I use, so I opted not to talk about it. We were talking today and saying, is there a possibility of being in a place where it feels like awe is too much? There is so much stunningness that you can't take it all in. Ever have those moments where you're like, I can't even believe I'm here? Like, sure, I knew this trip would be wet, I knew it would be raining a lot, but somehow this is still like so freaking beautiful. I look forward to hopping in and maybe hop going into the forest and, of course, learning a lot about filmmaking and storytelling. And I wish more people would be able to come out and see this for themselves. It's amazing! Number two, invite your black friends. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's my hydration. <laughs> it's alright, you're, you're cool. away from the kids and the wife. I wouldn't yeah, expect they, anything <laughs> less. <laughs> I'm not a big drinker on Twitter, so I'm saying there. But it is interesting. And tens of thousands of other people find it interesting too. And to me, it's so interesting. We had some really, really interesting discussions about racism, diversity. Invite voices that are not your own. Think about you the first time you were invited to do something outdoors. Something that you were trying for the first time. Who invited you? What did that feel like? We just went for the most amazing kayak paddle swim in the inlet of the Princess Louisa Sound. Like the really end of it, right by the base of Chatterbox Falls. There's a couple guys have already jumped in for a little bit of a swim. And we've also seen a couple of jellyfish in the ocean. And they're really big, they're huge jellyfish. It's red and it's got really long tentacles. And you, from on, on the sailboat, we can see this as the jellyfish has come to the surface. And so I'm like, I need to get some footage of these. I love marine life and I want to capture some of this. It's really beautiful. And so I'm being towed along by this kayak and right underneath me passes this giant red jellyfish. It gives me such a fright. I scream and like bubbling through my snorkel. It sounds kind of muffled like a kind of sound. It's very funny in hindsight, but really gave me a fright in the moment. Two hours later, I'm walking down the dock and there's this sign and it says, 
Caution, swimming not recommended. Rashes, burns, and severe stings. And I'm just like. Yeah, okay. I don't want to format it at all. Can you see the jelly on the water? Very <laughs> funny though, very funny. And they're so beautiful, I'm still obsessed. I love marine life so much and I love learning more about it. So it was a cool experience. Well, hello. How is it? Want to see the jellyfish footage? Pretty black though, other than the jellyfish. Yeah. Point number three: educate yourself and educate others gently and kindly, supporting them. Can you tell me, slash, me watching? what your name is and why you decided to come on this film course. Yeah, uh, I'm Mike Erickson's my name. Um, and uh, I have a little bit of a YouTube channel and I, uh, I'm just interested in learning more about how to grow that. But also a huge fan of Levi Allen. Yeah. Flipping the script a little bit, you met me. Yes. What was your first impression? I, I really appreciate people who are outside of the box. Mm -hmm. I... I know! This is what I imagine that Niagara boat ride is like. What is your experience with gay people, queer people, language around that community? Um, the language is still, I, I, I'm somebody who grew up in the 80s and I have Me too. my own, right. Um, I have my, I know that I have certain, uh, I don't know if intrinsic is the right word, but certain parts of my uh, identity and personality and all of that that's tied into um, um, I guess, I mean I just went blank there because I guess what it what it is is I'm nervous I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm nervous I'm going to be offensive accidentally. But this is why I'm asking you the question. Yeah. Is because I want to know what is your, like, what does it feel like raw when I'm going I don't have to identify as a woman and you're like, oh, well, this is new to me, like. Um, I mean, it's really interesting to me. And yet I've consistently made the mistake that because I've told stories that I like, that I think the next one will be easier. Mm. I can keep coming up with better questions to be asking that will help people develop their own voices better. Because I don't need them to mimic me. I need them to like do their thing better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, how do you use transcendent story structure with this modern age of like really good internet video? Yeah. And instead of having a conversation with seven people all at once and have them all that attention on me and then have to be eloquent and explain my identity, my orientation, and then the politics of gender and sexual orientation on top of that, it was just too much. because that is so much effort I get it. and yeah. so much energy for me that it's literally exhausting. Yes. I mean, we're this 
sparse, so we'll get the sails up, a little bit of sailing, and then it may be we'll mow the sail around that corner. It'll be a little better. Yeah. I like it. so different. I'm giving it loose. Yeah. More loose. I gave it back to uh, Aaron as it didn't make sense. Do you want to take a moment to say something about your sponsor, Cutco Knife? <laughs> <laughs> I always carry my Cutco Knife when I go sailing. <laughs> so should I give this as a souvenir? No, I think this can be useful. I'm going to keep this in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever anybody gives me guff, I just go. <laughs> Well, I mean, if I would dare John's sale, I would buy him another one. Behold, there is a glimmer of light off in yonder distance. I haven't seen a rainbow in a really long time. It's because it's been summer and it hasn't been raining. <laughs> sailing trip we had some really important conversations and the one that we probably debated the most was why a diversity hire is important. A lesson location day four, <laughs> not three. I don't know whether this is going to use, going to use this as a textbook. Okay, see you guys. And there's a giant spider on that thing. Be careful. Is it a crab or is it a spider? Yeah, it's a spider. There's a spider! Oh my god! Oh, look at that! It's huge! <laughs> Thank you. 
When have we gotten in the door because we knew somebody? When have those connections, that interpersonal relationships that we have paid off and been in some way an advantage or an opportunity for us that we might not have had otherwise? Now imagine if there's nobody out there like you who understands you and your community or your experience to give you that experience and opportunity, that open that door. Why do cisgender heterosexual people get a leg more easily than BIPOC, queer, non-binary and trans folk? Well, because it's a system. What can we do to dismantle that? It was really great to have a group with open minds and willing to challenge each other. Yeah, you heard me say that? Yeah. So are we doing a lighting session, Levi, or...? It's uh, extreme ownership, yeah. <laughs> what that is. Behind you? You're laughing at me filming this? If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love the ocean especially marine life, being on or under the water. However, I've never been on a sailboat for more than a few hours. To be perfectly honest, it's been a long time since I've really truly stepped outside of my comfort zone to try something new and to do something that just scared me a little. <coughs> A dream cabin. Space, the look at the, look at the stairs in there. Go ahead. I was actually looking through your viewfinder. I don't know if I should even film this. That, that's a sauna. Oh, oh that is? Yeah. Oh man, is it high tide? You can jump into the water? Looks and like it. Is that how that works? Looks like, yeah, there's like a little hot tub. Plunge, sauna, cold uh, plunge. I'm sure they do that too. And like the perfect anchorage to just stare. You know that they've had Probably highly entertaining. Oh, they're so beautiful. Ah, I messed up. I'm also white. I have that all of that privilege. I have access to coming to these workshops, which I know are not cheap. So to make sure that I speak up for my needs is the first step to creating change to make it more accessible for other people. Oh, look at that. Oh. Uh, there's something in French called a floaty educating people in this community probably could have if I'd been brave enough to bring it up. I think today is our last full day out here in this beautiful location. It's been a really transformative experience to push me outside of my comfort zone. I think some of the apprehensions that I had coming into it were accurate and that the interpersonal dynamics would be the way they have been. 
and some of it has surprised me, which has been really cool, and I'm really glad about that. To another level for you, when we're talking identity politics, I just feel like, I guess I just feel for you, because it's, it doesn't feel like the world necessarily had a spot for you when you were growing up, and how difficult that must have been for you. Thanks so much for watching. This was challenging to make. Please like and subscribe if you appreciated this. Thank you for listening, and I hope you all can live and learn and inspire and create change.